Sherry is my hero. She sent me that mug because I collect mugs and it was with pride that this is where I'm going to school and where I'm going to get my degree that's going to get me a job doing proofreading and get me into something that I love doing a lot more. Hi, I'm Nani, and welcome to my cyber coffee shop, Chronicles of Nani. Uh, this is the place where I talk about the fact that I have progressive MS, and I'm in a wheelchair, and how I still make a habit of living, really living, uh, beyond those things that could hold me back and I don't let them, or at least I try not to let them. Uh, if you have a chronic illness or are in a wheelchair, somebody that you care about uh, is, or you're just curious because you meet people on the streets and in everyday life uh, that may have some sort of uh, chronic illness or in a wheelchair and you want to understand because we're normal people, just like everybody else. Uh, just, we have some challenges that we meet. If you see us outside, we're definitely meeting those challenges. So, it's a good idea to subscribe. Uh, the subscription number going up is, uh, it makes me happy. Uh, and as I've said before, when you make someone else happy, you can't help but be happy for having made someone happy. Um, today is a very special episode where I'm going to uh, start with talking to you about one of my heroes. And it's a real life hero. This is somebody I know and have known for a long time. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is have some coffee. Today's coffee mug uh, was given to me by my friend Sherry, uh, and it's for Oakland Community College, and that's in Michigan, and it's where Sherry goes to school. Uh, and she is working on uh, her associate's degree uh, because it's something that she does anyway, um, is editing uh, other people's work um, and she does some writing herself as well uh, and has published a few books uh, but uh, and she's working in a very different industry right now and if she wants to get a job doing editing she's going to need a, a degree uh, something that says yes I'm serious about this um, Sherry and I met in high school. Uh, she's only a year younger than I am. And she's decided to take advantage of a degree program that could get her back in school and working on that degree. Um, it's scary, so I'm told. Um, as a person who did finally get the degree I wanted, it took me 13 years. So I was, well, in the accelerated classes that I took in 96 and 97, there were more people closer to my age. But in some of the uh, classes that I took at community college while I was finishing my degree because I was missing a few uh, 100, 200 level classes to finishing the associate's degree when I went. Uh, I was definitely one of the absolute oldest people 
in the class uh, when I was taking those classes and that could be intimidating um, or it can be people flock to you for information because you're older and you've lived a lot of these things. I encouraged her when she was thinking about it because you, you don't stop learning. You learn your entire life. So going back to school is not, you know, wow, I haven't been to school in so long and I, I, I don't know if I can go back and actually learn stuff and homework and all that. You do that. If you are living in the world, you are learning all the time. If you are working, you are learning at work all the time. If you fill out time card or stuff that you did at work, any kind of paperwork, you're doing homework all the time. If you think about your job um, or if you're working on something uh, to work on advancing in your job, you're doing homework you're basically going to school anyway. It's just a more formal environment of going to school, but you never stop learning. Uh, there is absolutely no reason that you should feel intimidated about going back to school. Uh, my own mother uh, was picking up classes to work on her bookkeeping uh, associate's degree. Uh, she was a bookkeeper. Uh, you can make more money with the degree. Uh, so she was working on that. She wanted to get the associate's degree and she took community college classes while she worked. Um, I think the last class that she took, she was in her 40s. Um, so and she wasn't letting it intimidate her uh, because there are so many things that she'd been learning both at work. Um, think about electives and um, things that you learn from raising kids or things that you learn from working in a completely different uh, job function uh, than what you're going to school for you still have learned so much. Um, I know there were a couple of electives uh, in, in the 100-200 level uh, that I went back to community college for. I took French. Uh, I, I did really well in French uh, when I was in high school. And I took French 101 and 102 as the electives I still needed to make up in the lower levels uh, towards getting my uh, bachelor's degree. They were less expensive at the community college. And yeah, I cheated a little bit because uh, I did well in French uh, in high school and I spoke to my cats in French. I still speak to my cats in French. Was I cheating? It, it, no, I don't think that you call that cheating. They're credits that I need for, needed and credits that I paid for. Um, it's just things that I kind of already knew some of them. If you have the opportunity to get a grant, um, don't, it doesn't matter how old you are. You've never stopped learning. And uh, it, it's... Still, I hear so many people say, oh, I couldn't do that. Um, Sherry is my hero. She sent me that mug because I collect mugs. And it was with pride that this is where I'm going to school and where I'm going to get my degree that's going to get me a job doing proofreading and get me into something that I love doing a lot more. Um, and she is my hero. I couldn't be more proud of uh, what she's doing and how she is standing up and saying, yeah, I can do this. Um, she's told me that there were a couple of things that, uh, yeah, it's actually 
easier than I expected it to be uh, because she's been learning these things. There are things that she enjoys doing and learning that she's been doing all of her life. When you go back into school in your 50s and you've got so much behind you that you're adding to what you are doing in school that it actually makes it easier than if you'd have gone to school without that experience right from high school into college. Um, there's a lot of life experience you don't have to draw on. Um, and I know papers that I wrote when I was older and finishing my degree, they were a lot easier because I actually had the experience and the experience in business um, to write those papers from things that I'd already done. Uh, so if you are thinking about going back to school and if you are thinking about finishing a degree, getting a degree, um, to forward yourself uh, into a better paying position or a position that you'll just enjoy better. Um, don't be afraid of it. You've already put so much in that you don't even realize. Uh, and a lot of people that are thinking, oh, I can't go back to school. It's been so long. You're just not realizing that you never quit learning and it's not as hard as you think. Take advantage of it. Go finish. Uh, finish the degree, get the degree, and uh, make the rest of your life happier. It also works with uh, if you have a chronic illness, if you are in a wheelchair, it changes things. Um, chronic illnesses are usually things that happen. They don't necessarily know why they happen. I uh, certainly know with MS that they, they compare different people and it's people from all different backgrounds and people that have different habits. Um, I know people with MS who have never smoked, who used to smoke and quit a long time ago, who quit when they were diagnosed, who still smoke. Doesn't make a difference. Um, I know Fat people, skinny people, average people, um, doesn't make a difference. Uh, it's just one of those things that they do know that the farther you are away from the equator, the more likely you are to get MS. Um, however, even as far as that goes, it, it goes back to random. It's not like everybody who lives in the top half of the United States and in Canada has MS. Um, and it still goes back to there is no other common denominator to figure out why people get it. Um, there is nothing that you can do to stop it or keep it from happening to you. Um, you just deal with it if you are diagnosed because there's nothing you could have done. Um, and that's true with so many chronic illnesses. Um, and all I can say with that is take advantage of learning. Uh, same thing as going back to school is learn. Uh, read things from reputable sources uh, about the chronic illness that you've got. Uh, join uh, support groups, whether they're online or if they're uh, in person, or just start a support group with other people that have the same chronic illness you do. And you can share stories and learn so much about different symptoms and different ways that people deal with their chronic illness. Um, definitely same thing in a wheelchair. People end up in wheelchairs for lots of different reasons. Uh, the progressive MS is what put me in a wheelchair. 
Um, other people it could be a car accident, something that happens at work. Uh, at that point, you can go back to school and get a degree that um, will, will help you move on to another job. I've been diagnosed. I'm at the point where I can't work. Um, and I'm a recovering workaholic. Uh, this show that you're watching is uh, one of those things that I do uh, because my background's in broadcasting and I love doing editing. I've had to get used to seeing myself. Um, and I got that over that too uh, because I was definitely the behind the scenes person uh, because I was a producer. The editing was my favorite part of uh, what I did. Um, so I get to edit. I edit slower now, uh, but I still get to do something that I love doing. Um, I, I certainly don't do it fast or proficient enough to get a job doing it now, but I still get to do it. And I still get to enjoy that. Um, and that's something that makes my life more positive as I go along. Um, but being involved in self-help groups um, and talking to other people, learning about other people with my disease and with other chronic illnesses um, has helped a lot too because it keeps me from feeling lonely. Uh, I've got friends and family who love me dearly and take care of me and check up on me. But um, it, it's still, when you are with all of these wonderful people that love you and they do everything that they can to make you feel comfortable and to understand what's going on with you, it's when you get together with other people that have chronic illnesses that are in a wheelchair, that you have something in common that you can talk about learning. And yeah, sometimes that includes going and taking a couple of classes to, to learn uh, a little bit more about the chronic illness that you're dealing with. Um, there are lots of places that offer support groups. People that become part of that support group and you become friends will help as well. Um, so the, that kind of goes with the uh, going back to school. Uh, it, it's You never stop learning. Um, and whether it's I'm going to go back to school at an older age and I'm going to get my degree or finish my degree, um, or if it's uh, I have a chronic illness, I didn't expect that or I'm suddenly in a wheelchair and that changes my life. Now, what do I do? Um, learn. You never stop learning. Everybody learns all the time. Don't be afraid to share with other people and keep learning because that's the way that we stay young and stay positive uh, it is to learn as much as we can and share as much as we can. Uh, I hope that you've gotten something out of this week uh, and I definitely hope that you will see me again next week. Uh, but the Cyber Coffee Shop is open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Uh, so you can come and have coffee with me anytime. And I hope you will. And I hope that you'll see me next week. Thanks a lot for watching.